you very much. Oh my goodness. Thank you very much. I, Art, thank you so much for that introduction. Uh, Art and I have been very, very close. We've been close personally, and we have been close politically. And um, boy, oh boy, do we know what it's like to campaign. Do we? We do. Um, he's right about everything he said. Um, I, I'm in it for what I believe to be the right reasons. Uh, I work hard at this, arguably harder than I do at the job I use to raise money for my family, because this is a very, very noble commitment. This is by far the most enlightening experience I have ever been through, holding elected office, running in the campaign process to be selected as a candidate, working for the people of the United States of America at whatever level of government I'm chosen to do so. The honor is tremendous. And I can't speak about it enough. I want all of you to know how very much it touches my heart that you're taking your time out this evening to come here on a Friday to listen to me inside when it's a perfectly beautiful night outside. Um, it really means a lot to me. And um, now that I've been emotional and I've overflowed, I'm going to give you my speech. You all know my name is Anna Little, and I want to work for you in Washington. I'm a mother and a wife. I've been married to my husband, Robert. Take a bow, Robert. It's very, very difficult to be the spouse of an elected official, and he does a tremendous job. I've been married to Robert for 18 years. We have three beautiful children together, all of whom are attending Henry Hudson Regional High School in Highlands, New Jersey. I'm a solo practice attorney, so I own a small business. It's also located in Highlands, and I am presently serving as the mayor of the borough of Highlands. I'm a former Monmouth County freeholder, and this is significant because the population of Monmouth County is roughly the same as the population of Congressional District 6, and therefore I feel that my experience qualifies me to run for this position. But even more importantly, through my experience as an elected official, I know how government should work. And I don't have to tell all of you, because you're here tonight, that our government in Washington simply is not working. Taxes are completely out of control. We teach the poor how to live on a handout instead of teaching them that they are capable of supporting themselves. We allow illegals to flood our hospitals and take our jobs. And instead of deporting them or teaching them how to enter the country legally, we grant them amnesty every 10 to 12 years, giving them an incentive to overstay their temporary visas and remain here in the United States without permission. The Wall Street CEOs in New York abuse the market with no accountability to the stockholders and our government bails them out instead of holding them accountable to the stockholders. And how does the government do all of this? On the backs of the working middle class, ladies and gentlemen, that's you and me. And after we have supported the poor and we have supported the illegals and provided them medical care, and after we have bailed out the wealthy, our government tells us that they want to control our health care. They want to tell us what doctors to use, what hospitals we can go to, what treatment we may be eligible for, in essence, whether we live or whether we die. Finally, the American people are saying they have had enough. But is the government listening? No. Because our government in Washington right now does not represent us, ladies and gentlemen. It represents special interests and political agendas. We cannot allow this tyranny to continue any longer. We have to fight against oppression and false representation in Washington, D.C. I will march to Washington to protect our rights to life, liberty, and economic freedom. I will work with other conservative representatives in Washington to see that our federal government receives the overhaul that it needs. And I will uphold the Constitution with every vote, ensuring that our federal government is limited to the intentions of our founding fathers. Ladies and gentlemen, in this primary election cycle, the Republicans are being given a choice between a candidate who can self-fund a campaign 
and an experienced elected official with a proven track record of conservative governance, including budget reductions, citizen budget review, economic development, and transportation initiatives. And I've also won four elections, and this one would be my fifth. I'm going to need your help to finance this campaign in order to win this race. And by contributing to my grassroots campaign, you will be assured that I will not be beholden to a single contributor over any other, and that includes myself, and that I will report back to you, the people. We will win this race, ladies and gentlemen. We will reform government in Washington, D.C., together, as a team. Our founding fathers created a government for the people, of the people, and by the people. We are proud to be the people of the United States of America, and it's time we stood up and that we took government back. Thank you very much.